HIV AIDS has now been around for more than 30 years and thanks to antiretroviral drugs, the virus no longer has to be a death sentence. But longer lives are coming at a cruel cost. Many long-term HIV survivors are ageing far too soon. Conditions such as dementia, brittle bones, frailty and cardiovascular disease are emerging for some people in their 30s, 40s and 50s. New research has revealed the havoc caused by HIV and some of the drugs used to suppress it. Lateline's Karen Barlow has this special report. It's 1993. Nick Scott is 30 years old. He has HIV, but he's not letting go of life. I only really realised this recently when he had pneumonia, uh, how determined he was. He said, told me once, he said, I love being on the planet. Love being on the planet. And, uh, and the, his determination to stay on the planet has been extraordinary to see. Nick Scott survived HIV for 12 years before the arrival of antiretroviral drugs. His long-term companion Hugh has witnessed the struggle. I think that he thought perhaps it wouldn't get him, but so a lot of other people thought the same thing. But old age came too early for Nick Scott. At 38, he was diagnosed with dementia, a condition associated with people twice his age. In 96, I went to Singapore, and uh, I rang him from Singapore. He'd driven me to the airport. I rang him from the, from the airport, and uh, he said, what are you doing in Melbourne? Hugh Scott has made many adjustments to look after Nick. Difficult, and, but also, but also uh, uh, you know, a journey. It's been a journey. Uh, with its ups and its downs, and undoubtedly there's some of that uh, still ahead. Current estimates are about up to 20% 20, 20 of individuals will get HIV dementia, um, and we're seeing that pre prevalence start to escalate. New Australian research has found that HIV gets into the brain quite early and attacks it. One of the major problems is that the virus uses the brain as a sanctuary site where it can hide out from the immune system and also from the drugs that we use to treat patients. And this poses a risk for patients to developing dementia down the track. Yes. Three months worth of ACT there. And the older class of HIV drugs also cause premature ageing. Britain's Newcastle University has found that drugs like AZT damage DNA. It's likely to be a combination of things and in the past there has been suggestion that certi certain anti-HIV drugs were associated with an increased risk of uh, say heart disease but this is only a very small part of the picture. There's definitely something aside from the drugs which is driving these diseases in HIV positive individuals. This is my pill to intake for the day. There is still no cure for HIV, but drug therapies have extended many lives. Taking around 30 pills a day is a price to be paid. After living with the virus for 28 years, David Paulson's body is betraying him. That's upsetting, I guess. One of the drugs has given me a brain disease, which is, I guess, worse than HIV. It's called superficial siderosis and you lose your lose you use the lose the use of your arms and legs you go deaf which i've gone deaf and speech you start to lose your ability to talk um, that's why i'm slurring my words a bit today uh, and this goes on and you you eventually bedridden and get dementia and die so that's and there's nothing known about it there's no treatment and no cure some people in their 30s are developing conditions usually seen in 70 and 80 year olds. Brittle bones, cardiovascular disease, organ failure, cancer and early onset dementia. Not, not particularly pleased about that but again I guess if I do get dementia I won't know anything about it so but I, I don't want to go down that road. It's not a road I want to travel down. Antiretroviral drugs cement that HIV no longer has to be a death sentence. But successes in treating the disease have led to complacency. Every year, more than 1,000 Australians become HIV positive, And that number is steadily rising.
Researchers hope their work will lead to new HIV therapies. Those new drugs will be too late for the first generation of the early aged now entering care. After years of specialist HIV care, Nick Scott has moved into a dementia unit at a nursing home. To suddenly be plucked out of that community, out of the, leaving behind all his friends and uh, all that social engagement uh, to be parked in a warehouse for human beings, which is essentially what uh, the way in which these nursing homes do seem to operate, um, was an awful thing. The aged care sector says it doesn't have the resources to provide specialist care for people with HIV. Oh, considerable strain. The system has been structured substantially to deal uh, with people who are frail and old. As the population has aged quite significantly over the last 30, 35 years, then the level of dementia has grown accordingly. We need to now change a lot of our focus to provide services for people suffering from dementia. It's estimated 30,000 Australians will be living with HIV by 2020. Not all will need early aged care, but planning is needed. Well, the thought of being in a nursing home is just is really depressing. I'd rather stay here and have home care. A good girl, aren't you? I am getting a little bit of home care. Yeah, I have a cleaner who comes in and helps me clean it around the house. Um, but at this moment, other than that, I don't have any care issues at the moment. But that will, um, in the future, uh, and we don't know how long in the future, we can't tell. It could be a year, it could be five years, whatever. But I will need a lot of care, if, particularly if I'm bedridden with my arms and legs gone. I'm, I'll need a lot of care. A Productivity Commission report due out next Monday is expected to recommend greater flexibility in the aged care sector and encourage smaller, more focused facilities. Perhaps gay and lesbian centres like those in the United States. I can't see the funding for that happening and I do think we're just going to hopefully uh, get some government support to have training for aged care providers so that this is just part of their normal routine. For Nick Scott, any major improvements in aged care may come too late. Karen Barlow, Late Line.